Thursday on an island. Simon was shipwrecked and washed up on the shore of a deserted island. He's thirsty, and the only thing he has is a plastic bag and a straw. After looking around, he sees a juicy cactus, a tall leafy tree, a dirty pond, a pool of mud. How can he use the plastic bag to get water? He can't use the cactus. It can be toxic, and without a sharp tool to reach the pulp, the plastic bag is useless. The dirty pond and muddy pool are filled with bacteria and parasites, and without tools to start a fire and boil the water, he could get sick. The best bet is the tall, leafy tree. He simply needs to tie the bag on the edge of a branch and pierce it slightly with a stick. The tree will produce drinkable water through transpiration. Well, that's clever. Where's the waiter? Adam is the head waiter at a one-story steakhouse. On the busiest night of the week, he vanished, and the owner called the police to file a missing persons report. Detectives talked to the last three people who saw him. A trainee server said she only saw him when he got to work and parked his bicycle. The chef said he saw the waiter in the kitchen when he came to get a glass of orange juice. The cook said he last saw the waiter going upstairs. After the statements, the police arrested the cook. Why? This was a one-story restaurant. He couldn't have gone upstairs. Spilling the tea Susie went to study for her university exam at a coffee shop. She ordered a white tea and sat down. Ten minutes later, she got up to go to the bathroom. When she returned, her laptop wouldn't turn on and her teacup was empty. Someone had spilled the tea on her computer and cleaned it up. She called the manager, told him what happened, and they came up with three suspects. The barista said he had been swamped and didn't see anything. The supervisor said he was sorry that the milky tea spilled on the computer, and he could see if insurance would cover the cost. The head barista said he was sorry the milky tea spilled on her laptop, and he'd make her another one while they waited for the police to arrive. Immediately, the store manager knew who did it. It was the supervisor. He couldn't have known that the tea had milk in it since it was cleaned up. The only person who remembered the order was the one who prepared it. The missing phone We're at the coffee shop again. This time, Stuart forgot his phone on the table when he left. But once he realized and came back, his phone was gone. He saw a guy running outside the store, and Stuart chased him. When he caught him, Stuart said, I've lost my device. Did you take it by accident? The man replied, I have no idea where your phone is, sir. I was just grabbing coffee. Stewart immediately called the police. Why? Stewart told him he lost his device. That could have been anything from a smartwatch to a camera or something else. The guy couldn't have known it was a phone unless he took it. Where did the baker go? The Cupcakes Den is a local shop that became famous for its tasty, well, you guessed it, cupcakes. On Monday morning, the head baker vanished, and the shop couldn't deliver the 200 cupcakes they had promised for a birthday party. The owner called the police, and they had three suspects in their custody. The helper said he had gone out to buy more frosting. But when he returned, the baker was gone. The waiter said he had been cleaning the shop of the massive mess from making the 200 cupcakes. The manager said he was meeting with a new supplier to get more beef jerky at the shop. The detectives knew who was lying. Can you guess it? It's the manager. Who needs beef jerky at a cupcake shop? Get the last question right! Adam was taking part in a brain teaser TV game show, and he had one last question to answer before winning $50,000.
he was tired and decided to call his best friend Luke to help him. The host asked, If you could rearrange the order of the letters in this word, A-C-I-P-C-I-F, what does it show? A country, a city, a large mountain, or an ocean? Luke answered correctly. Can you? An ocean. If you unscramble the word, it shows Pacific. Where's he hiding? Martin vanished one morning and his family called the police. Detectives searched everywhere and questioned 15 people, but none of them gave any untruthful answers. His son Jake found a letter from his dad saying, If you love me, you'll find me. He went to his father's office to see if he could find any clues. He was looking around the room and immediately knew where his father was hiding. Can you guess it? On the wall, there's a picture frame with his dad's cabin, and it's got a hand-drawn circle on it. He must be there. Lost in an underwater cave Sarah just got her certificate as a cave diver. She decided to spend her afternoon exploring some dangerous underwater ocean caves. While turning left and right, she got lost. She didn't have enough time to look for her way back and continued swimming further. That was when she came across three openings. Through the first, there were 45 hungry piranhas. Through the second, a great white shark. And through the last one, a giant box jellyfish. Which is the safest path? The first one! Piranhas are freshwater fish. They can't survive in salt water. The van. Susan was outside watering her plants when she noticed three people dressed in black clothing carrying electronic devices from her neighbor's home. She asked them what they were doing, and they said they were from a moving company. Immediately, Susan called the police. Why? There were no license plates on the van, and movers don't only carry electronic equipment, but all sorts of stuff. The Prison Escape One morning, Detective Smith was called into a maximum security prison to discover how three men had managed to escape from their cells. The prisoners could neither see nor talk to each other, but they arranged their escape together. They went to the shower room at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And only one person was allowed in at different periods. How did they manage to communicate and escape? They wrote messages to each other on the bathroom mirrors, used steam to read them, and planned their escape together. The Villa Disappearance It was a cold, rainy weekend. Michael, Susie, Amara, and Luke were spending Saturday and Sunday together playing board games. On Saturday morning, when they woke up, Amara was missing. They looked everywhere for her, but couldn't find her. That was when Luke called the police. Detectives examined the room and asked everybody what they were doing at 4 a.m. Luke said he couldn't sleep, so he went downstairs to the gaming room to play some online games. Michael said he couldn't sleep either, so he went outside to look at the stars. Susie said she followed Michael outside to get some fresh air. That was when the detectives figured out who was lying. Michael and Susie. It was a rainy weekend, remember? The Cursed Photo Alan was on his final stretch to becoming a detective. He passed a bunch of assessments until he reached the last one. This was where his attention to detail skills would be tested. The chief of police handed Alan a photo. He told him, This is Michael. He's having a birthday party. But something in this photo is very eerie. Alan spotted it in two seconds. Can you?
there's a hand inside the blue balloon. Well, how did it get there? The right amount of water. Peter was the best problem solver in his class. One day, his chemistry teacher called him up to test his intelligence and inspire his peers. He gave Peter three glass jugs. None of them had any measuring markings on them, but just a label showing their maximum capacity. The first jug was filled with water up to the top, and the label read 8 liters. The second was empty, and its label showed 5 liters. The third was also empty, with a maximum capacity of 3 liters. The teacher told Peter to arrange the liquid so that only 2 liters remained in one glass jug without using any measuring tools. Peter figured out how to do it in 4 seconds. First, he needs to fill the 5-liter jug all the way to the top. Then he needs to pour the water from the 5-liter jug into the 3-liter jar until it's full. What remains in the 5-liter jug is 2 liters. The treasure coin An archaeologist spent the past year looking for a lost ancient treasure. As he was digging, he found one ancient gold coin. He took it to his museum. When his colleagues carefully cleaned the coin and took a closer look, they refused to accept it. Why? It reads 100 BCE on the back. Ancient people didn't know they lived in that era. Or did they? <laughs> no, they didn't. Lost Inheritance Larry's granddad was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why, when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, five years later, Larry was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his granddad's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 2 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Larry was ecstatic. He was going to be rich. He drove to his granddad's villa and found the cherry tree. He waited for an hour or so until 2 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since the granddad hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller, and its shadow has become longer, too. A smart investigator. A man living in a small village in the mountains got his goat stolen. He was sure one of his neighbors was behind this crime. The head of the village invited four suspects and said, I'm going to give each of you a magic stick. Bring them to me in the morning. By that time, the thief's stick will have grown by 5 inches. The next day, the head of the village examined the suspect's stick. He immediately knew who had taken the goat. How? The thief's stick was 5 inches shorter than those of the rest. He had broken it expecting it to grow longer during the night. A realization. Three friends fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a boy painted mustaches on their faces. Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? At first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. It meant they had mustaches on their faces as well. An apple riddle. Eric was locked in a room with 19 other people. 
Each of them could see the entire room and all the people inside without turning their head or body or moving in any other way. To get out of the room, Eric had to place an apple in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The guy managed to do it. How? He put the apple on one person's head. A weird choice. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One, one mile away from his house, and the other two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop. And in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill. And this method allows the guy to ride his bike down without any effort. A draw. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of them scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie since one team won and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Time travel. An inventor has created a time machine. He's packed enough food, water, and other necessities and is now ready to test his invention. He sets the timer to go 500 years back into the past. The man is about to press the start button when a thought comes to his mind. He slaps his forehead, takes the time machine and his supplies, and goes downstairs. What for? This way, he'll avoid a nasty fall. Multi-story buildings were rare five centuries ago. A money problem. A notorious criminal caught rich businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I leave for you. And the criminal put 5,000 bucks on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. Granted wishes. Amanda was walking along the beach one day and found a glass bottle. The thing looked ancient, and the girl had to put a lot of effort into opening it. To her shock, guess what? A genie appeared from the bottle. I'll grant you three wishes, but there's one condition. You can't wish for more wishes. Amanda agreed and still managed to get more wishes. How did she do it? She started with wishing that the genie allowed her to ask for more wishes. Strange reaction. Two British women wanted to lose weight. They went to the gym, ate healthily, and drank a lot of water. In two weeks, both of them lost 10 pounds. But one woman was happy and the other upset. Why? The first woman lost weight, and the second, 10 pounds in UK money. 11. How did she survive? Melissa stayed late at work one evening. When she was walking home, it was already dark. Suddenly, she noticed a group of people. They were moving in a strange, jerky way, closer and closer. With growing horror, Melissa realized the approaching people were actually zombies. 
In a moment, she got surrounded. Then, darkness. And still, the next day, the girl was in the kitchen, making herself a vegetable salad. How is it possible? Look at the date. It's November 1st. It was Halloween the day before, and zombies were just some dressed-up guys. Beach Volleyball Andrew and his friend Kenneth went to the beach to have some fun. Andrew started to play volleyball with Gary, a guy they met there. After the game was over, Andrew went to a beach bar and ordered a lemonade. But after drinking it, he almost immediately felt sick and lost consciousness. Kenneth called an ambulance and his friend was taken to a hospital. There it was discovered Andrew had been poisoned. The police questioned the suspects. Kenneth said, I'm sure the barman put something in Andrew's drink. The barman exclaimed, Why would I poison my customer? It was probably the guy he played volleyball with. He lost the game and wanted to get revenge. Gary said, After we finished playing, I went to swim in the sea. I didn't even notice Andrew had been taken away. Who poisoned Andrew? It was the barman. He lied about Gary losing the game to frame the guy. A teacher's riddle. A student had failed his test and came to his teacher asking how he could improve his marks. The teacher replied, If you manage to solve my riddle, I'll give you a better mark. You have a cardboard box. It's easier to lift from a wooden floor than from a steel table. What's in the box? (laughs) The student thought for a while and answered correctly. What did he say? The box is filled with magnets. A missing model. Ashley was a popular fashion model. On Friday, she had to open a show. But 10 minutes before the event, she vanished. Several witnesses claimed the girl had been taken away in a black car. The police questioned four suspects. Betty, Ashley's colleague, said, I felt sleepy before the show. I made myself a cup of coffee and was drinking it when Ashley disappeared. Kevin, the manager, told the detective some equipment had been broken. He was trying to solve this problem. Paul, the hairstylist, explained that he had been refreshing the model's makeup. And Donna, the designer, said she had only come several minutes before the show. Who was behind Ashley's disappearance? It's Paul. He's a hairstylist, and they don't deal with makeup. Plus, there are no beauty products at a station. In disguise, a feared criminal managed to escape from the police. He got a job in a wealthy mansion. When the detectives arrived there, they found out three men had been hired recently. They questioned each of them. Michael, the cook, told the police he had been working in a restaurant before. But then the restaurant went out of business and he found a new job. John, the gardener, answered he had always been interested in plants. After finishing garden design courses, he landed this job. Robert, the security guard, said his father was the house owner's friend. He helped Robert to get his position. Who's the criminal? It's the cook. Before the police came, he'd been trying to make an omelet. But look, it's full of eggshells. A real cook would never make such a mistake. A train mystery. It's something that comes with a train, leaves with a train, but is no use to a train. And yet, no train can go without it. What is it?
It's noise. Yeah, really. So a tired mom came home after work and found that one of her kids had made a sandwich but didn't clean up afterwards. She walked upstairs and found the three of them doing their homework. All of the children, Aaron, Chloe, and Tim, denied making a mess. Still, the mother could tell who was lying. Who do you think is guilty, and how did she understand it? Since there's butter on the right side of the knife, the person who made the sandwich is left-handed. She has only one left-handed kid, and that's Tim. It's a cold fall day. You're at home drinking hot chocolate and watching a movie. Outside, four neighboring kids are playing. Lily, Riley, Tom, and Mark. Suddenly, exactly when you turn around, a ball breaks your window and kids run away. You don't know who did it and no one confessed. Later in the evening, though, you get a note from Lily. She didn't want to give away her friends, but being a very nice and honest girl, she also couldn't keep silent. So she gave you a note with a little hint. In the note, there was just a question mark. Take another look at the note. Can you guess who did it? The question mark is saying it all. Question mark. So Mark must be the one who threw the ball. A king couldn't decide which of his sons he should name his heir. He called his sons and proposed an unusual tournament. The horses would decide. There would be a horse race, and whose horse came last would be named king. When the race started, of course, no one moved. They were standing like this for three nights and three days, until the race was postponed. The sons were thinking a lot how to solve this problem. The next day, all three of them jumped on their horses' backs and raced as fast as they could. But the king never changed the rules. Why did they do that, and what was the solution? The sons decided to switch the horses. Now each was racing fast to make the horse of the brother come first. Right in broad daylight, you find yourself trapped in the dungeon of the world's most famous villains, and you should leave ASAP. Behind the first door, there's Joker waiting for you. The second door will take you straight to Freddy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Behind the third door, there's a Demogorgon from Stranger Things. The choice is yours. I definitely recommend using the second door. Freddy is not dangerous during the day, because he only wakes up at night. All of the money from the city's bank was taken in the middle of the day without anybody noticing. The storage room was found completely empty, with only a note lying on the floor. There was a number written on it, 37738. The police arrested three of the most known criminals in the city, Bell, Jonas, and Steve. But they didn't know which one was guilty. They invited a detective to crack the hint, and he managed to do it immediately. Can you guess who? If you turn the paper around, the numbers will turn into a name, Bell. Hannah went on a business trip to a nearby city and stayed at a hotel. She was relaxing, reading a book after a long day, when she heard a knock on the door. She opened, asking what happened. The man outside got confused and said, Oh, sorry for bothering you. I thought it was my room, and left. Hannah didn't believe it was just a mistake and called the security to apprehend the man. Why was she so suspicious? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he really thought it was his room, he'd try to open it with his keys. A peasant boy was caught in the king's palace. The king was very mad and didn't want to let him go just like that. 
he loved all kinds of riddles, so he gave the boy a chance to escape. He said the boy could walk out of any of the three doors, and if he stayed safe, he was free. Behind the first door, there were lions that hadn't eaten in three years. Behind the second door, there were three trained assassins. Behind the third door, there was poisonous gas. The boy made his choice and managed to leave. Which door did he walk out of? He used the first door. If lions hadn't eaten in three years, they couldn't have survived. They were just skin and bones. <laughs> a young woman, Julia, drank a spiked tea and left a note. The note was saying, I just can't live like this anymore, and so I won't. Nobody's guilty. However, the officer didn't think she drank the tea willingly. He suggested that someone had staged everything and made her do it. After a careful analysis, it was confirmed that the note was really written by Julia. Still, the police officer arrested the one who was guilty. There were only three people in the house. Julia's boyfriend, Ian, her older sister, Kate, and her lab partner, Mia. Can you guess who's guilty? The first letters of each sentence come together as Ian, her boyfriend's name. He must have made her write a note to make it look like it was her choice, but Julia left a hint for the police. A man fell off the third floor of the building. He was fine, but he lost his memory and couldn't tell what happened. Someone had seen him a while ago washing the windows, and everybody agreed it must have been an accident. However, a detective decided to check if it was true. He walked up to the third floor, opened the window, and threw down a coin. When he returned, he stated that the man didn't fall himself, but somebody pushed him out. How did the detective know? The detective opened the window. It means it had been closed before. If the man had fallen by accident, the window would have remained open. You're locked in a dungeon. There are three ways out, but none of them seem safe. Behind the first door, there's a huge and strong guard. Behind the second, there's three big and hungry dogs. Behind the third door, there's two sharp spinning cogwheels. Which way should you follow to get out and stay safe? The third one! The cogwheels are quite high above the ground, so you can crawl beneath them. You and your friend come back home very late, when everyone is already asleep. Nobody knew that you were outside, and nobody should. There's a code on the door that asks to type in the rest of it. Your friend completely forgot it, but if you don't type it in 10 seconds, it'll start the security alarm. Can you guess what the missing numbers are? The combination is just a set of two-digit numbers – 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So the other six digits are 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8 – that make the remaining 16, 17, and 18. James is a single father of triplet daughters. He stayed late at work and got a call from a friend who just saw one of his daughters at a party in a different neighborhood. However, the friend couldn't tell which of the daughters it was. When James came home, he asked his daughters who had been at the party. Autumn said she had been doing her homework all evening. Serena said she spent the day outside reading. Emily said she'd been playing Uno. James could tell immediately who was lying. Can you? Emily. She couldn't play Uno alone. She would need a partner for that. You're lost in a deep forest. It's getting dark, and you have to get out immediately, unless you want to spend the night in the woods. 
Luckily, you come across a little shack where a witch lives. She promises to show you a way out if you solve her riddle. So, here it is. Ava's mom has three daughters. The oldest daughter's name is April. The second daughter's name is May. Can you guess what's the name of the youngest daughter? It's Ava's mom, so the last daughter's name is Ava. Stephanie came home after a tiring day at work. She was very excited to finally eat her favorite ice cream after a hot bath. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Stephanie guessed it must have been one of her kids who ate it. She called them and asked, who ate my treat? Michael said, I just got home and haven't eaten anything yet. Nicole said, I didn't touch your ice cream. The youngest, Jenny, said, it wasn't me. Stephanie immediately realized who was lying. Can you guess? It was Nicole. She knew that her mother talked about ice cream, even though Stephanie didn't specify what her treat was. Mm -hmm. Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one, a lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. The fourth is a 15-floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting. 
but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently, because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, we don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, it would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer? The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick? The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. The next riddle Adam has to solve is a logic one. One wizard makes his prisoners choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly dragon. Behind the other, a chest with gold. Pick the right door, and you'll become a rich person, and will be allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, you aren't likely to survive. There are two signs on the doors. One always lies, the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, the treasure is here, the dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, 
The treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where is the gold? The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Adam knows the show must go on, but where should he go next? The room he's in has four doors, one in each of its walls. After looking around, he notices a note in the corner. He picks it up and sees a strange inscription. After thinking for a while, he opens some application on his phone, looks at it, and leaves through one of the doors. What does the inscription mean, and what application is it? Adam turned the note upside down. Now it read South. Then he used a compass app on his phone to find out which door was leading to the South. The guy found himself facing the last challenge. It was another detective case. Ruth was moving home. While she was busy with boxes, someone took her laptop. The girl went over to her new neighbors. Perhaps one of them had seen something. Eric told her he had been staying at home with a high fever for the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan explained he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Adam is an observant guy. He immediately noticed that Jonathan's car was covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He wasn't at work. Finally, Adam gets back to the main hall. He's passed all the challenges and cracked all the riddles. Well, I guess he's about to become a millionaire. And waiting for him inside is the tax man. Oh boy! Uh Uh-oh, Allie was missing for days when her husband Orson called the police to report it. Detective Wells arrived at the scene and found her purse buried in the garden. Inside, there was a note that read, It's a sign. You're mine. I redesign your new life. The police had three suspects with unusual names. Orson, her husband, Ryan, her best friend, and Atlas, her brother. Who took Allie? It was rhyme. Almost all the words in the note rhyme with his name. While driving in a storm, John saw three people standing in the rain at the bus stop. But he only had one seat available in his car. Who gets the ride? His childhood friend, an old lady that looks like she's freezing, or his wife? John asked his childhood friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and then take the car back to his house. And John himself will wait for the bus with his wife. Mark is locked in a 30-foot tall cell with an earthen floor and a window near the ceiling. There's nothing else in his room but a shovel and a bed. The entrance is blocked with concrete. How can he get out? Mark can shovel the soil to the wall underneath the window and climb out. Detective Jones was called one day by Border Control about a suspicious pickup truck. Every day, the vehicle went back and forth between two countries with a large sack in the back of its truck bed. When the detective opened the sack, it was filled with sand. What was the driver smuggling? Trucks. A geography teacher vanished on the first day of school. When the police arrived, they suspected four people who claimed to have alibis. The landscaper was mowing the front lawn. The English teacher was giving students a surprise test. The principal was preparing for his welcoming speech. 
and the coach was meeting new students who wanted to join the football team. Who was lying? The English teacher. Of course! <laughs> Students don't get surprise tests on the first day. Well, maybe not at this school. <laughs> A crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marx is assigned to this case, and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who? It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. 
As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place? She got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm -hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom, while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How? When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Sarah wanted to get some money from her brother for a house. She couldn't tell him the truth and asked him for an expensive gift. After a week, her brother gave her a glamorous tiara. Then she went to her second brother, asked for money, but he gave her jewelry. Still, she's got both money and jewelry. How is it possible? She asked for a similar jewelry item and sold one of them. Susie went on a dating website and found three guys that she liked, all with some very impressive backgrounds. But only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess which one? Shane said he was an astronaut. He went to Mars and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. Chris said he was a scientist and went to the North Pole. He enjoyed being on floating ice and seeing both Arctic foxes and penguins. Dylan said he was a pilot, and once he flew his helicopter so fast, he broke the sound barrier. Shane is telling the truth. The sunset on Mars is blue. There are no penguins in the North Pole, and helicopters can't travel faster than the speed of sound. Oh, and yes, we'll also ignore the fact that no one's been to Mars yet. Susie also thinks Shane has beautiful eyes, so who are we to disrupt this love connection? <laughs>